early on I had the insight that there are clearly there's much more to interacting with the world through our senses than we might think. We don't just act as a receiver of information which we then categorize and in a sense just use to form a neutral picture of what the world is like. It's obvious that at least two things going on. We can distinguish them by two familiar words, so they're not always used in quite this way, which is perception, perception of what the world is actually about, what it contains, which it would contain independently of an observer being there, and sensation, which is the subject's interaction with that, how he himself is touched by the information arriving at his at his body and and responds to it in ways which actually laden it with emotion which uh, make it in a way uh, a bright and beautiful place to to live in which um, it couldn't can possibly contain even in its pure um, uh, physical description I came to realize how how real this distinction is through an extraordinary experiment and originally done with a monkey who had had her visual cortex at the back of her brain removed. The result of that was that apparently she was blind. It turned out through the work I did and others did too that in fact her blindness was in a sense uh, nothing, not what it seemed to her. She may have believed she couldn't see but we persuaded coaxed her back into a condition where she could actually manage very well visually. She could run around the world avoiding obstacles, pick things up, recognize them and so on. Um, but all the time it was as if she didn't understand that. She had to be uh, continually persuaded to do it. Now this led to later studies of human beings who had a condition called blind sight, which is the most extraordinary, unbelievable phenomenon. A man with blind sight after damage to his visual cortex, will say that he's completely blind, that there's no sensation, that's nothing happening in his visual field. But if you ask him the right questions, help him to realize what he could actually do if only he tried, it turns out that a, a subject with blind sight actually has access to a lot of visual information. It's only that it doesn't feel like anything. He's not having visual sensations. Now, what's the consequence of that for him? I and mean, why isn't pure information good enough to create the phenomenon of, of, of sight. Why do people with blind sight say that it doesn't, it doesn't matter to them? It doesn't feel like anything. Um, it doesn't bring them any joy. I saw a patient just two weeks ago in Brussels. First thing he said to me was, uh, Doctor, I said, I, I know you, you've shown me that I can see, but it, there's no joy in seeing at all. Now, what could somebody mean by that? That they're getting the information, but it doesn't feel like anything. They don't feel involved with it. They don't actually sense that they're present in the act of seeing. I think it's precisely that they're lacking that whole dimension that we call sensation. And sensation is being supplied as a kind of emotional response. Um, sensation goes back, I think, far into our animal history to the time when we were actually making emotional expressions, reacting to stimuli, um, even with, you know, with facial bodily movements, which expressed our opinion about the stimulation, what it meant to us, how it affected us. All that's now been internalized. As I've said, it's been privatized. We don't show the color red on our faces. We don't show the salt uh, on our faces as we, as we taste it on our tongues. But internally, we're still reacting with some kind of emotional bodily expression. And that's the basis for the qualia of sensation, the qualities which we value so much.